This is... Wow! What a week. What a week. Politrix. Politrix. Welcome to our What a Week. Now, in a comment on last week's discussion, a viewer thanked us for making people feel intellectual without the intellectualism. We're not quite sure what that meant, but to help us with other tricky statements is our own Minister of Interpretation. Please, welcome, make some noise for Botsang Muilua. What's up, brother? Uh, good, good morning and morning to the viewers, Flash. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually impressed with the comments and the viewers. Now I've got a title of Minister of Interpretation. Yes. Well, when I saw that comment, you know, yep. we, we, without taking time on our work on that, actually, and I've seen a lot of people comment saying, we have simplified the understanding of politics. Mm. And, and uh, you know, somebody wrote to me and said, I'm a general person, I don't follow politics. But I like your show with Fresh because what you do is you talk the language that a normal person can understand. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what we should continue doing because we are targeting the masses to understand politics outside politicians and parliament. Yeah, taking the politics out of politics. Absolutely. Local government collapse. Let's talk about the, the West Rand and Ekorlin. Well, uh, as we had predicted on this platform, yeah. the collapse of these municipalities is going to you know, continue for a very long time, particularly in Gauteng, mm. where the three major metros, Ekuruleni, Swane, and Jobek, are the contestation of almost, you know, 40-40 with the ANC and the DA leading mm. and the small parties coming in between. I, I think it's going to continue. I'm not surprised with the uh, uh, rent west or uh, west rent as you call it. Uh, that's my hometown, you know, and Ranfunten uh, and Krugersdorp and all that. They fall under Mohali City, they sure. fall under the rent west. But uh, it was bound to happen uh, with the coalition. They're working together, and which is also very surprising that the EFF mm. and the ANC, who have created an impression that they are arch enemies. Uh, are working together to gain political power in the local government. Some of us years back were called names when we mentioned that the EFF will go to bed mm. with anybody that puts the checkbook on the table. And sure. they've demonstrated that. They've mm. done it in Houting with the DA. They're doing it with their, you know, like Eval, the ANC at the moment. And they will do anything under the sun to can do what they've done in a cool lady. And I've predicted that they removed the mayor. Mm. They will continue to take mayors or speakers from small minority parties like uh, the COPE mm. and the IFP and so forth. And then what they do is they share the MMCs of the municipalities. Yes, yes, yes. Like in a Google, it's 5-5. Five, five. It's 5 the ANC mm. and 5 the EFF. So what they do with all other critical positions of HODs and so forth, then they give them to these minority parties which the MMCs will control them. So the focus, if you look at it, it's not even on service delivery. Mm. It is purely on money. It's purely on strategic positions that they want to occupy. That's why I was saying to people, a mayor and a speaker, it's symbolic. Mm. You know, it's a symbolic proposition. Mm. So there's no control of resources and money. But they are playing their games very nice. Unfortunately, as we have said before, it is the residents of the those, the, the voters, the electorate mm. and residents who are going to suffer the most. There is instability in local government. And this, to me, uh, fresh and the viewers, it says, South Africa, beware. Mm. We are going to national elections, and I suspect we'll end up in the same situation if there's no outright majority, and we'll have a government of national coalitions. Mm. That's where we are heading to as a nation. Mm. And, and, and for me, it creates very much instability, especially in an immature democracy like ours. We may be, you know, 30 years into democracy, but we are very immature. Still children. Uh, still children in democracy. And therefore, I don't think the country is heading in the right direction. In fact, the other day, a uh, former um, executive mayor of Tuane, uh, Dr. Makwarera, uh, was arrested, uh, presented himself uh, to the Hawks. Well, I uh, think he did the right move. And uh, but he says he's blessed. <laughs> well, uh, uh, blessed in this instance may mean you know uh, God has responded timelessly before things got into danger. But for him to stand up and go to the rocks, and he has long admitted that he has done. I'm waiting for him to start singing yeah. of how that forged. Who forged uh, it? Well, according to him, he said it was given. Uh, uh, to him, it was handed to him. It was handed over to him by some ANC. Done, done already. And, and, and done already. So 
and to say you can use and submit this. So, but in court papers, mm. and if he's an honest person, he will have to come and name the people who gave him that document so that they must also be investigated. How did they? We now know sure. that they created a PDF document, changed it around, made mistakes. But I mean, forgery and fraud are criminal offenses and they should face the music. And uh, so he could spend 15 years behind bars. Oh, and there's a maximum yeah. uh, term uh, or you can, but you know, the courts will look at various aspects. Mm. And I, I suspect Dr. Macquarella mm. is going to turn a state witness in this process to be exonerated. But he must still refund the just under 2 million rand he earned as a salary, though. Uh, absolutely. That's, yeah. what, that's what the Municipal uh, Finance Act prescribes, and mm. that's what the rules and regulations of the country prescribe. So he must refund. And, I, and we spoke about it mm. that. The, the one court in the case that, and the high court in the case that came with a ruling about people who are earning monies irregularly that they must now pay back. I think we are back. on the right track. It's a good start. It's a good start. As a but is it enough though? Well, look, uh, uh, paying back the money is, is not a deterrent enough that you must pay back the money but not do time. No, 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 no. I don't think that's what the law prescribes. Mm. The law, they would say you will pay back the money that you you illegally end, but you will still face prosecution. Face yes. For, so it could be double. Paying back the money is what you end illegally. Mm. You know, this goes back to the issue of saying, uh, you end this money illegally, we are taking back what you end illegally, but there's a crime committed mm. as well. Mm. So you will still face the crime. G4S manage the prison in Mangaung, yes. uh, where our um, uh, Michael Schofield escaped from prison <laughs> um, after a body was burnt uh, in the cell he was supposed to have been in. They were summoned by Parliament. They pretty much gave Parliament a middle finger and said, "You must subpoena us." Well, you know, you know, fresh. Why, 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 why the arrogance? And surely, just show up and explain. And 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 this is the problem when we have, you know, commercial regulations. Mm -hmm to create a space for what we spoke about, foreign direct investment in the country. Now people will look at G4S and say, these are investors, these are people uh, who are in South Africa to run. It's a foreign company that we should know. And I've said to the people, they must go and dig deep. I can tell you G4S belongs to Israel, actually. It's not coming from the UK or whatever. Like, the G4S is actually the front of the Mossad, mm. and they do it all over the world. And if anybody doubts what I'm saying, we can go and discuss it with those people. They've been in South Africa for various reasons. Let me tell you and the viewers, our national mm. uh, finance intelligence center is sitting at the G4S owned building you are kidding. in St. George. And it's not only that, most of the strategic financial centers of this country are mm. sitting or residing at a building that is owned and administered by G4S. Oh, wow. So me and you, when government is looking at our tax movements mm. and our financial transaction movements, it's sitting at an organization that is in the forefront of being the spies of Israel, and we are very comfortable with that. Now we come back to Manahu, where they are supposed to manage again a prison that is owned by who? Not by this government. Mm. A prison that is co-owned by this government or co-administered by this government of ours and some consortium from the US, the UK and Australia. Mm. G4S wraps up again and they are the ones responsible for security there. The legislative authority of South Africa, the highest legal decision-making body of this country, calls G4S, a, a parliamentary committee, mm. calls G4S to come and explain what actually transpired there. And as you say, G4S shows the government the middle finger. Let me tell the viewers, this would have not happened in any other country except in South Africa, where a foreign national company comes and, and, and shows the legislature a middle finger to say, no, 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 we want to be someone to come to court. You were invited. You were called in mm -hmm. with the Department of Cultural Services. You asked, you, you asked nicely. Uh, yes, to come and, come and explain what transpired. Then you tell them, no, we won't come. You must subpoena us. You must summon us. And, it, and they even tell the legislator who must do it in a, in, a, in a sense of it must be the Minister of Justice because Correctional Services falls under justice now, mm -hmm. as well as the National Speaker of Parliament. I mean, I, I, I think that is very arrogant. And in, in a normal country, actually, the directors of that company, the works should have picked them up sure. and locked them up in order to comply with the rules and regulations of this country. But, you know, disregarding the law in South Africa has become a common thing. That's why common people, normal people like me and you, we sit here and we break the law because those in the upper echelons of the country and political, they're doing the same and, and, and they're getting away with it. Mm. We saw it with State of 
Yes, we saw it with the PIC. Now G4S is showing as a middle defender on a very serious crime. Mm. The crime of a criminal who has committed crimes that has put us in a very bad space as a nation. Mm. Mm. Could we move to the public protector? Yes. Uh, and uh, the inquiry into her fitness to hold office. So apparently it's been halted because of budgetary constraints. Yeah. Uh, but there's also an argument, though, that the process has been almost made to drag by her team so that before we know it, her term is up and you can't get rid of it. And then she leaves on her terms. Absolutely. In fact, wouldn't you do it? If you are my lawyer, wouldn't you drag a case until I end my salary, until my term ends? But an advocate in Kwebani yeah. is left with few months in exactly. the office. The exactly. term is ending, I think, around October this mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. So there's few months left on that term. Even if there were no budgetary constraints, trust me, the way this has been going in, in, a, in a snail pace, mm. it was not going to end. Or if it, it was going to end in September and then his term ends in October. Now, now uh, we, we should start applying logic in some instances. You know, common sense must prevail uh, before we get into the budgetary issue. Common sense should prevail. Government is supposed to say, is it worth pursuing this thing? What is going to come out of, come out of this? Mm. And I said, oh, let's go and reach a settlement with this person. Walk out clean. We don't want to anymore. We'll pay you your money, you know, to, us, to the end of your term. You walk clean and we continue as an issue. We save money. And I said, but, but there's something very disturbing that I thought about as I was coming to the studio this morning that, you know, I, I think uh, Advocate Mkwebana's case, it's a classical example of abuse of women in power in South Africa. Mm. And the women organizations and bodies, the women's leagues, everybody's silent. And this woman is being subjected to something that nobody has ever been subjected to. It started with the judges in court. Almost every case of hers, we knew that it would be thrown out. Almost all, especially when it involved politicians and senior politicians. Secondly, her own rights at the moment, not as the shame command, mm. as the public protector, mm. uh, are being violated. And I'll explain to why. The, 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 the Public Finance Management Act, or even the, 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 the budgetary procedures of the Chapter 9 institutions, they make it very clear that when you are facing a, a legal you know, challenges or, or any legal process in court or any inquiry, as the public protector, not as, a, as an individual, mm. there's a budget that is allocated. The legal budget of the PP office will fund that, okay? That's the first step. Now, those resources, there is no silly. The government did not put a curb mm. of up to how much can one use in that. The first mistake, we make loss and we don't think ahead of what if a person was the worst case. What is now? the worst case scenario? They didn't do that. Mm. Now the, the, the budget is exhausted. It is not her. And that's where the media is failing to report properly. Mm. She's not delaying the case. It is not her. It is the, the department or the institution that says, we have run out of money to con continue helping you. But she's got a right. She's got a legal right of saying to the people of South Africa, I'm sitting in that dock facing that committee as a public protector. Mm. I, I'm doing my duty. So you can't tell me you are without money. I need legal representation. And I'm entitled to legal representation. Now he has written to to the President of the Republic and the Speaker of the National Assembly giving them until Thursday to get a respond mm. to I need legal representation. And you can see the response is very smart. She doesn't say, I don't get it. I said, I need legal representation. How you get it, where you get it is none of my business. I'm entitled to legal representation. And I think she is well within her rights to do that. You know, let, let's remember what the media and the people of South Africa did with Jacob Zuma. And I'm relating it to this case towards Zuma being impeached or resigning. The people were making noise that he's costing the state a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, this case that has been dragging for 18 years now of the arms deal. And he will do appeal after appeal after appeal. And I used to say to people, we created that platform. The law makes provision for that. Me and you, we are entitled to do that. Mm -hmm. Whether we are using or abusing the law, it's, it's not the case. The point, everybody said, the law makes provision for that. And if we don't wake up as a nation, and close this gray area and loopholes within our laws that makes political office bearers mm. to exploit those laws. Then we'll be faced with the same situation where people will do wrong. I don't say Advocate Mukwebani has done wrong. I'm saying people will do wrong and they will abuse the resources mm. and the loopholes, uh, the gray areas 
of our own laws, which are too nice. You know, our laws are very nice, even towards criminals. Uh, uh, we read on the best case of Manawung how some criminals were chilling on how that prison, which is a private prison, those people are having three cost meals, they have to have three foods per day, mm. something that a normal person who doesn't commit crime in South Africa is not uh, having access to. Sure. And these are some of the challenges with our laws and our constitution talking of human rights, but that's the price we are paying now. We must pay advocate and lawyers, and we know the senior counsel, they don't come cheap. What do you say about people saying, but why is she playing the victim card? Why is she playing the woe is me, a black woman card? when the previous uh, public protector is also a woman, but that is black, that didn't go through that. Well, my, my, my view on that, I don't think it's a black woman cut per se. I, I think it, it, uh, the, 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 the previous public protector was also under attack a lot, mm. especially towards the Jacob Zuma case. Uh, but, but I think it's more politics than, than being a black woman. Mm. I think the, the, the divisions within the ruling party, and these people have history from the ruling party, they are appointed by the ruling party, even if they go through vigorous processes. But I think it's, it's she's been seen, being from the camp of Jacob Zuma or the RIT or so forth. Mm. And if you look at what has been happening, the SARS commissioner himself, the former police commissioner, so everybody who was seen in the past as being from the other faction of the ANC, mm. the system is dealing with them. And I said, so... I think it's more of, uh, instead of gender and race, I mm. think it is more of political fighting within the ruling party. But for instance, the cases, like the litany of cases that she lost, surely were based on facts and law and not politics. Or are we naive to believe that? Well, uh, if, if I have to put it on the table, and I've, I've followed them almost all those cases. Yeah. I, I, some had even similar facts mm. with other cases which were presented uh, of, of, of Mkwebani and, 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 and uh, the predecessor, uh, 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 Julie Madonzel. Mm. And, and the judges will, will decide different with the same facts. But people who practice law, they will say the facts may be the same, but the way you present your case in front of a judge may be different. Mm. Uh, I, 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 look, there, there's human mistakes that were made. We shouldn't put a blind eye on the fact that there's human errors. If we have to believe the reports we are seeing in the media, uh, that uh, uh, advocate McCormick is that. But who in our jobs? do a perfect job 100%. Who in, well, people were saying it's case after case, case after case. Mm -hmm. But fresh, it will take people who do not believe that our judiciary is captured to believe that the loss of those cases was normal. I, I'm one of the people who strongly believe that judges are human beings. Mm -hmm. They've got a price check on their heads and, and they also follow some political inclinations, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, some of these cases, if it was another person sitting there who was not being seen as a proponent or a supporter of Jacob Zuma, the other faction of the ANC, it would have been a different ball game. But again, maybe this teaches us that in future, people who occupy strategic positions like Chapter 9 institution must be people who are not politically aligned in class. Sure. Look, we are all having a right to belong to political parties or to vote political parties of our choice. But once people start being key personnel of political parties and who are being seen, in strategic position of political parties. I don't think, it, 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 we should not deny them an opportunity to participate in their professional them, but we should manage it in such a way that we, it, when it be, it's becoming obvious and evident sure. that Fresh is, is, a, is an A person of political party X, therefore we're not going to appoint him in that position to avoid such squabbles. You know, independence of the judicial authority and chapter nine institutions is very important. And the way they've been operating all along. It has not been independent. Last week I spoke about the era of Advocate Bilalani Nuka. He came out now. He spoke about how he spoke with President Zuma on the side, having tea and COVID, not as a formal interview to say, hey, daughter, they are coming for you, but I don't think I'll come because of ABCD. Mm -hmm. You can see because they had a personal good relationship, camaraderie style, and, and therefore it compromises people. Exactly. That's why people saw him mm -hmm. as a person who did not want to press the button to lock Jacob Zuma up. And it is because of the comradeship. I don't say people must not be comrades. We have families and comrades and friends who are in politics, mm. but it's how we manage our political system. Geopolitics, we have Trump, we have the tumbling dollar, and we have countries increasingly saying we want to trade directly, not with the US dollar. I, I think 
the collapse of the U.S. dollar and the U.S. empire that has been happening for over 200 years is gradually fading. Mm. I don't think it will come absolutely in. And America is not going to take this thing lying low. Yes. They are not going to do that. They will fight back. They have actually started showing the fight back. Uh, we spoke about the visit to Africa last week. We saw this week that they, they sold and opened some big coins and gold reserves in response to what Russia, China, and the other countries are doing. So the USA is not going to, to take this line. No. I think if, if I have to speak for the Americans, or if I was an American, I will bank on Bitcoin. Mm. And and as well as gold reserves that they, they stole from Africa and other countries for many years. I bank more on that than on the dollar because mm. the dollar is yeah, every day seeing it slow down. And if countries like Kenya, who for many years were seen as puppets of the U.S., stands up now, they've got a president who stands up and says, hey, uh, fellow countrymen, those of you who are holding dollars, start getting rid of them. We are going to start trading with the Kenyan shini mm. from now for all imports that are coming to our country. But many other countries have responded to that. You know, it started with, obviously, the BRICS member states. And now the other difficulty that America is going to start noticing is that Japan, which is normally not involved into this international yes, squabble. Yes, yes. Sitting there in their corner, they stood up and they said, you know what, NATO and the US and your friends, better off, we're going to trade oil at a kept rate with Russia, straightforward. We don't want to waste our time. So Japan is taking care of its citizens. But the other big thing that has happened this week is Iran and Saudi Arabia rekindling their diplomatic relations that were actually destroyed by the U.S. Mm -hmm. When the U.S. and the war in Yemen happened, Saudi Arabia and Iran, they were actually victims of circumstances. They started mm -hmm. fighting each other over Yemen as well as the influence of the USA. Now the two countries have started talking. You know, the two giant uh, uh, states in the, in the Gulf, the oil producers have started to, with immediate effect, we will reopen our embassies between each other and we'll visit each other and we'll start trading with each other using oil. Again, they are shutting out the, the, the U.S. dollar out. But it is going to unfold and it's going forward faster than I envisaged. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it's going to start happening, you know, and it's happening from all over the, 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 the world. You look at Latin America, you look at Africa, you look at the Middle East, and you look at Asia. Actually, the Southeast Asian countries mm -hmm. are having a meeting as we are sitting here, discussing on them coming with a currency that will be used in Southeast Asia mm -hmm. as we are sitting here. Mm -hmm. Now, there's BRICS, the Southeast Asia, there's Latin America and the Middle East talking about the cars they can use. I hope and wish Africa could follow suit and start talking about the currency we can use to trade in the continent. But are we going to go with this so-called new world order when we're having US dollars thrown at us left, right and center? It is going to be difficult. We are sitting in a continent of like 52, 53 states, mm -hmm. depending if we recognize the, the other state in dispute. But it is going to be a very difficult and a mammoth of a task mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, uh, we saw, we spoke about it last week, how the West now, you know, four countries in West Africa, America has pumped dollars in there. We know that there are countries in, even in Sadak member states, when you look at, at, at the Republic or the Kingdom of Lesotho and Kingdom of Eswatini, they still rely a lot on donor funds and donor money. If America goes to Eswatini, there are some member states that are trading with the rent, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But we are still some of the sweet boys of the USA. So the Saku member states, Namibia, Botswana, uh, and, 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 and Eswatini and Lesotho, they are still using the rent, although Botswana is on a different form. They are trading with their pula. Mm. They even their battle because the 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 pula is not part one on one with the rent as the other currencies. Mm -hmm. So Botswana is a little bit out, but uh, Zimbabwe is choking on you know trading on cold and other commodities. Uh, Mozambique has been silent; they haven't said much. You know, in this mm -hmm. instance, it's going to be a difficult task. Uh, you know, fifty two member states. I think less than half of Africa mm. will dish the dollar, and 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 it depends. If the free Africa trade you know, uh, transaction starts happening, that may push an influence. Mm. That, but let me tell you what the U.S. is going to do. Once Africans are starting to trade with each other without the dollar, America is going to look for the weaker link and start pumping the dollar into the weaker links. One to say, you want to trade, you don't have money. Here's the dollars, mm. trading dollars. That's what they will do. And, and it's just of how African leaders will be ready to can respond to those actions. But again, the yuan, uh, China and Russia are not folding their arms, 
So as we said last week, it is tremble for Africa. It is no longer that one of Berlin. Yes. You know, uh, in the yesteryears, mm. uh, it is a new one. It's an economic scramble. It's not bombs. It's not a neo-colonialism. It's not colonialism and occupation of Africa. Is who has the bigger Fed check to can recolonize Africa economically. And Trump, going back to Trump, ah, look, there's not much that came out of the Trump case. Mm -hmm. uh, 34 charges, all of the same, uh, you know, hiding uh, 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 transactions that he was not supposed to. It's all the same thing. They just broke it down. Mm -hmm. And earlier on, I said to you of the studio that uh, it's the same as Jacob Zuma's case. 780 charges were actually 18 charges. Mm -hmm. and, and Trump is facing one charge, in my view. It's so one charge. They broke it down mm -hmm. to make it worse, to anger the people more. And... Uh, I think to keep him out of the race for the next year, for the next election. But do you think it's political or do you think it's the chickens are coming home to roost for Trump and the way he did things? Look, I, I think it's both. Mm. Uh, I, I, I think uh, the American government was going to go for Trump. Remember, there were the engagements with Russia. There were the Russian government funding elections in the U.S. and all that. So those were very serious treasonous allegations against him. And yeah, because this uh, Stormy Daniels uh, porn star issue, it's the s smallest of the issues exactly. he might be worried about. Uh, exactly. But you know how, how legal people are. They will add uh, yeah. many other things. Mm. Now, now, I think they were still going to go for, for, for Donald Trump. Mm. But I think what fooled the American government to even pressure now is him announcing that I'm coming back to contest the elections because once he comes back, it will be easy for him to can kill this case and put it aside. Mm. You understand? Uh, uh, but they're going to stop him as well. This is also to stop him to say you are facing very serious treasonous charges. Mm. Therefore, you cannot contest the next elections. Let's hope that this will end before the next U.S. elections. But I, I doubt if it will end for that. Cases in America, they are like in South Africa, they can take many years, mm. especially when you are dealing with someone like Trump to, to who has the money. Yes, they can yes. like. But one thing that I found very upset in this whole case, that uh, Trump was funding or fully a possibility of a war and wars in other places and regions. And, uh, Trump is a businessman. Mm. Look, war is not good for real business people. Mm. I, I don't think it makes sense. And that's my view. I don't think it makes sense that he should be accused that he was funding wars that will affect his private businesses. A normal businessman will not act in that capacity or in that manner. He's the only American president, only one, mm. who never started a war or fought or shoot or destroyed any country during his reign. Mm. That should turn now. Somebody who didn't fight, and that's where common sense comes in, somebody who didn't bomb any country mm. during his reign as the American president is being accused of funding and planning and fueling wars somewhere within the USA. It doesn't make sense. I hope he's got good advisors. And in closing, the DA uh, Federal Council, is that what it's called? No, no, yeah. the, the, the DA conference that it, happened. Yes, past yes. Obviously, I mean, John uh, Stan Hazel was going to win. We expected that. We said uh, it, yeah. Uh, Madame Zilla uh, won uh, unopposed. Yes. But Stan Hazen also went on a very... I am high on victory attack of the EFF, saying the public enemy number one. The thoughts on that? That's 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 political, and and I think he's taking advantage of the the force in the ANC. Stevenson was very smart in doing that. Mm. The the EFF has become radical in Turkey politics and 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 amassing black voters and support. Mm. And, and once people listen to the EFF leader talking, they will hate the DA more. So the DA is being smart in this, in that to say, but who here is actually soft and we can team up with? It makes political sense for the DA to want to co-govern with the ANC. Mm. Their policies are almost the same. Mm. And I said, they, they don't have any radicalism in ANC policies. They talk of non-racialism and things like that. So it makes more political sense for the DA to say, if things goes down, less than 50% for the ANC, who should we talk to? We don't want somebody who will get 10 to 15% to of votes and will be actually a last child, you know, in the mm -hmm. back room who will give us problems. Let us talk to these people and say, 
we know you love governing. We know you love power. power. Strategic. It's a very strategic noise that Stan Hazen is making, mm. and he's actually saying to the ANC, if you lose, we are the first door you mm. could knock at, and we can talk. And look, the ANC would be in a better position mm. to work with the DA. Not to say it's good for us as black people in this country, but because they think alike, they've been operating and running the country the same way. And look at how the DA, a day or two after... Uh, CN Hazen announces, you know, open arms. It reminds me the day Patricia Dillo was going around kissing, uh, I mean, uh, Helen Zilli going around kissing leaders of other political yes, parties. Yes, yes, yes. All that. It, you know, it reminded me that time. Two days after that, the DA goes and attacks the ANC uh, for, the, for the Minister of Finance, uh, you know, well, 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 I don't know what to even call this thing that the Minister of Finance has done regarding ESCOM exemption. But I think, oh, that um, uh, the, the, um, I think they proposed that um, the PFMA that they should not uh, they discuss, should have to uh, report report uh, on thieving and it's management. Exactly. It's, it's on else. mismanagement. It's on uh, a misappropriation of funds and, yes. and overspending. They should not report on that. That is upset. That is the most upset thing that I've ever heard in this country. Again, fresh. The laws of this country, mm -hmm. the PFMA. The Constitution makes provision for that. Now, how do we, as a nation, have a law or an act of parliament that makes provision to say if there are tax, mm -hmm. if there's overspending, if there's wrong spending, you, you, we can protect you. There's a law that says can protect you. I understand when it comes from the Intelligence Act mm -hmm. or the Intelligence Budget, where the PFMA will say, the intelligence, you can't tell us what did you do with the spokes money. I understand that part, whether it's military intelligence, police intelligence, or our national intelligence. I understand that part. The part that I don't understand is we have a state-owned enterprise or entity mm -hmm. that is struggling, that is asking for donors. We hear the Minister of Electricity says we must donate uh, uh, our charcoal. It's a long weekend, we need our charcoal. Now we must donate it to ESCOM. They are asking for help. Now somebody comes to me and says, I was robbed, mm. my money was stolen, or I lost my money, or I misused my money. Can you help me? Now you don't want to tell me how you were robbed, how you misused your money, mm. and how you overspend and you want me to help you. That doesn't make sense, mm. understand? So I also think that law is wrong, but I also was, was actually puzzled by the Minister of Finance or the Treasury itself. Mm. Let, let me tell you first, the Treasury has the creme de la creme of employees in government. Mm. If you look at those, they don't just dress nice and look good. Mm. If you look at them, their qualifications and their track record. Highly qualified. Highly, highly qualified, highly trained, highly intelligent, mm. competent people. Now to make such a boo-boo of them putting the card before the horse. I'm saying to a hungry kid, uh, <laughs> you know, here, yeah. shop, go exactly, shopping. Exactly, go shopping. I, I don't understand what happened. Somebody asked me yesterday and I said, there's two things that happened there. Either the minister mm. ignored the advice of the experts in the treasury, or the minister did not consult the experts in the treasury. Mm -hmm. You know, from DG down was highly qualified people that I respect. And and for, for Ms. Ms. Minister Kodongwana to come, remember the minister of the treasury or the minister of finance is the custodian mm -hmm. of the PFMA. Now let me tell you what was embarrassing. It's for the minister to go on a national television and say we are learning. We are learning what when we are supposed to be the teacher. The Treasury is supposed to be the teacher. It's supposed to tell other departments what to do, how to follow the PFMA. And the Minister of the Treasury stood up and say, we do those mistakes, we are learning in future, we'll uh, approach the Parliament first or the Parliament first, then we'll submit this thing. And by the way, we may come back and resubmit it. Mm -hmm. But I saw one which I don't know if it's true. I must follow for Transnet as well, the same thing. Uh, if, if, if it was not fake, if it was true, there's something there that's worse. Mm -hmm. What is worse there is that for Transnet, it says, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, you know, and uh, not having the S total S subject to be corrected. Subject to be corrected. Yes. It says they are even exempted for the next two financial years. Yo. Now, you, you, you are saying to me, this government plans and projects Thuggery, theft, misappropriation of funds for the next years. They are actually saying to trust that even if you steal, mm. even if you misappropriate, even if you misuse the money for the next years, don't worry, you are covered, you are protected. And I think the outcry of the nation and the population 
and opposition parties was on the correct front. That's why they withdrew it so quickly. But it's an embarrassment for the Treasury, one of the most boobs they've caused in many years. And, and I, I don't think they should continue doing that again. Let politicians stick to their political line function, their political heads, and leave the academic as well as the professional things that are done by public servants to be done by public servants. Sure. They should, they can read, they can question. President Beatty was one of the people who read, who questioned when you put documents in front of him. Ministers can do that. They can even do but let the technocrats in government mm. who are employed as experts to give advice and render a public and effective public administration, let them do what they are hired for. We will not have such decisions of a minister saying something on, 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 on Friday and then on come Tuesday he says a different thing. I actually thought it was an April Fool joke. And on that note, Botsang Mwilo, thank you very much. Uh, love hanging out with you. Um, love your opinions. And um, hopefully you will also comment um, at the bottom of the video and share your thoughts. No, thanks. I will do that. Actually, that's one thing that I've not been doing, yeah. to go back and comment on the view. I let the viewers to follow and all that. But thank you very much and thanks to the viewers for of Wow, What a Week. A shout out to every single wowzer that was tuned in. That's the show for this week. Hopefully you all enjoy the festive weekend ahead. Yes, that means you too, atheist. And hope you wake up on Monday with your eggs in whatever way you like them. Chocolate covered or scrambled, as long as they're not fertilized. Unless you want them fertilized. Enjoy it all. Wishing you a wow week. Shout out to Amped Studios. Thank you for hosting us and allowing us to use uh, your beautiful place. Africa Podcast Network. Uh, shout out to you guys. Pezulu Works for the cinematography. Audio engineer, Otis The Flow Fraser. Our guest, Butsang Mutimuame Muilua. And our creative director, Kuvesh Mohan. And show producer, Geletso Mudisa Geng. You can email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Have an incredible week in spite of yourselves. We're out of here. This is... Wow! What a